G'day world, Chris Hogan coming to you live from Myriad 2018. Thanks to our branded content partners, Everledger and Invest Sunshine Coast. And I'm here with Vincent Fletcher, founder, that's Vincent Fletcher, <laughs> founder of Cart and Cloud. How are you, Vincent? Good, thanks, mate. And yourself? I'm good. Mate, Vinny, Vinny, you hear that? You can call me whatever you want. It's all good. Just don't call him late for dinner. Okay. So, Cart and Cloud, what is it? So, it's a, um, it's a cloud-based uh, warehouse and transport management system for the SME market. So we actually started out with our own transport company, our transport and warehousing company in Sydney. And when we first bought the business from some previous owners, we got in there and realized that, you know, a lot of the way that it was run was, was really, really outdated. A lot of the stuff that they were doing was manual. And so we, we looked around for software to, to sort of automate what we were doing manually in the business. Couldn't find anything. And so then we built this software to improve our own business and then actually turned into a tech company later on. <laughs> Very yeah. good. Yeah. So you solved your own problems, you knew they existed and you plugged in the solution to the product into the market. Well done. So you were the market. The market product fit, I think, is a very important process or a very important way to go about creating a business and especially uh, SaaS software. So one of the challenge what are the, some of the challenges, you know, specifically that you res that you resolve for the, I guess those warehousing uh, companies out there? Is it when they get products in or mostly when they're pushing products out? Okay, so our, our business itself is what you call a, a third party logistics company. So the products- often, often referred to as 3PLs, yeah? Yeah, correct. So the products that we're storing or we were storing in our, in our warehouse were, were not our own. They were our clients' products. So they would send stuff into us and then they would place orders with us to send them back out. A lot of the, a lot of the time that was taken in our organization was just that we were receiving orders through email just with like PDF attachments that our staff would then go through and open the email and like click print and then print them out and then they'd have them on a tray and then we would have you know our picking staff come around and grab this huge tray of paperwork and go off into the warehouse and try and find the stock and do all this sort of stuff and so you know even if we had implemented a, a warehouse management system it would have needed to have been integrated with all of our clients and we had about I'd probably say about 20 different clients in our warehouse and so the, the challenge for us was, well, there was really nothing on the market that could take away that data entry or that manual step of really just converting orders that were coming in from our customers into something that our guys could go and use. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. And so you, talk, you talked about integrations there. Uh, is there any existing e-commerce software that you guys integrate well with straight off the bat? Yeah, we integrate with most of the big applications just through a, a software called Zapier which is sort of like a, an API integration layer. And that allows us to just suck orders in with filters and all this sort of stuff. Because in a lot of cases, people are saying, oh, I want all of my you know, orders which are being shipped from Western Australia to go through Cardin Cloud, but I want all of my orders out of New South Wales to go through some other system. And so being able to configure all of that sort of stuff makes it really easy. But then internally, we've got a number of, uh, of integrations with say accounting systems and that sort of thing, mostly on not importing orders, but actually creating bills for these third-party logistics companies to charge their customers. So that's sort of that's where we fit in. Yeah. So uh, th uh, logistics companies basically your customer just as much as the is the, is the merchant. Uh, is it, am I right in saying that? Just define what you mean by the merchant. Ah, uh, sorry, the the e-commerce. So the person actually selling the product, whether they're online or even retail. Sure. So we don't we don't charge the, the person with the Shopify system. We charge the third party logistics company in between. So normally for the 3PL themselves, it's actually a value add to have something like Card and Cloud because then their customers, the guys with Shopify, they can log into Card and Cloud and they can see things like what's my stock on hand or what's the status of these orders? Um, when was my job delivered? When was my order picked and packed? When am I going to run out of stock of this particular product? How many do I have on order? Previously, they would have to do things like phone the 3PL and say, hey, you know, can you go out into the warehouse and check or can you export a report from your warehousing system and email it to me so I can have a look at what I've got? And so we've sort of just taken out all of that stuff there. Um, but the actual 3PLs are the guys that pay us to use the software inside their organization. Fantastic. So a bit of inventory management there as well, by the sounds of it. Yeah, I mean, it's... A lot of people say, oh, what's the difference between inventory management and warehousing ma warehouse management? And it's, I mean, it's, to be honest, it took me quite a long time to really understand it as well. Inventory management is normally what you do if you're 
a business who, who sort of owns and ships out the products that you have. And when you're doing inventory management, you're, you're more worried about things like just how many of this product do I have in stock? You're not so much worried about where is it in my warehouse? You know, I've got this expiry date in this location, this expiry date in this location. You might not be thinking about things like um, replenishment inside of your things, like bringing things down from up high and putting them into areas down low where you can pick them from. And so those are the kinds of things that then warehouse management systems do. So they're far more focused on where is the stock inside the warehouse, how long has it been there, which stock came in first, which stock should I send out first, um, as opposed to just an aggregate total of how many do I have. That's fantastic. So uh, the picking and packing system is part of uh, Carton Cloud as well. Yep. Yep. And so is there is it best used via a certain device or is there an app for that? How does that work? Yeah, so for the picking and packing side, we run all that through an iOS app. Um, Android's probably still about six weeks away, but we built the iOS stuff last year for that. Oh, that's all fine. Yeah. So they, they <laughs> chuck that in a... Um, in like a, what you call a sled. You've probably seen them when you check into like Jetstar flights. They're running iPhones inside of scanning devices. So we use the same tech and the reason is is that it's really cheap for these guys to go out and buy like iPhone 6s and chuck them in these sleds and then they can scan pack everything in their whole warehouse just like if they'd spent three and a half grand on some sort of you know Motorola device running a shitty old version of Windows. Um, and so that's that's what we that's what we do and then all of that stuff just talks to our API, drives the picking and packing process. And it allows our clients, who are normally SME businesses, to pretty to get up and running like really quickly and really cost effectively. Because the thing for them is that they just want to get the software up and running. They don't want to spend fifty thousand dollars to do it, you know. And so we have a solution where it's like for a couple of grand plus maybe using the iPhones they already have, they can be out in their warehouse scan picking everything and automating their invoicing all the way through. So yeah. Does it work really well with multi warehouse solutions? Yep, so the the software itself can handle you know, people who have stocks, say, stored in Sydney, Brisbane, um, Melbourne, Perth, this kind of thing. Is there a limit to how many sort of warehouses you can have? I think the limit's actually about 16. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was about to plug you into a client, potential client of about 50 odd sort of locations, but... Well, there's ways of doing that. You just create... Good. Yeah, there you go. Different <laughs> things. Sometimes those guys, you know, their requirements, because we're SME focused, right? When you've got 50 warehouses, you're normally operating in more of an enterprise level thing. So there might be requirements where we'd just say, nah, to be honest, go off and get, I don't know, Manhattan, spend quarter of a million dollars, get that implemented. It just depends on their size. Our, our typical clients are, you know, guys turning over anywhere from maybe three to $15 million a year. They probably have staff of about 15 to 20. Um, and, and that's where we plug in. Once they become too big, we're, we're perfectly fine to sort of hand them off to those enterprise applications because they need complexity that we just don't handle. Sure. And so for those people that uh, have systems, I guess almost legacy systems that, or e-commerce solutions, or whatever it is, where, that want to plug into you guys, they can do that? They can yeah. integrate? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, they can do it themselves. They can connect up with their API. You know, they can use guys like you to build integrations in between. That's me, Media, not Beach City. Sorry, Beach City don't do integrations. <laughs> I should have said that, yeah. yeah. Um, or they can connect, they can contact us and depending on what it is, you know, we might just hook up this API for them and just run everything straight through that. It's a really simple solution. Um, so it just depends on what's required, yeah. But majority of our clients, they will have integrations sort of, they might have anywhere from 10 to I would say 50 different integrations of some kind. A lot of them are even just people emailing in files which we've set up certain software to read. But they'll have all that operational because they need it with every single one of their clients. So the number of touch points that the system has becomes massive. And that's why you know you end up streamlining your organization up front with the data entry. And then the software itself just it's it's so ingrained in what you do, yeah, that it, it runs the whole that runs the whole company. So mate, uh, how long's Card and Cloud been running? Um, we first started writing the software back in the middle of 2012. First started selling at the beginning of 2015. Back then, it was just myself and one other person working on it. For a while, it was just myself for about a month in the middle of 2015, and now there's about uh, I think there's 21 of us working out of Burley Heads. Wow! So yeah. all local team. Yep, local. We've actually we've got three people who are outside of Burley Heads, one in Sunshine Coast and two in New Zealand. Um, most of those guys have like what we call onboarding roles, so they work with businesses to get them up and running on the application because they need training and they need help 
with the configuration just around exactly how to make it match what they need. Um, but yeah, I mean, our whole development team is in a single office in Burley Heads, and uh, we run everything from there. Fantastic. So we're neighbours. That's great. And so with regards to building teams, what's some of the challenges that you've had to overcome with building teams? Well, the first thing, obviously, is finding the people. I mean, it, I think most people that have that have tech businesses here in, um, in, gold, in, well, in the Gold Coast. South East Queensland. Yeah, that they will say that developers are, are quite difficult to come by. You know, to give you an example, we've actually had a role for an iOS developer that we've had up since, I don't know, about maybe May last year. And so far, I haven't been able to fill that position. There you go, guys. Yeah, if you so know an iOS looking. developer, do they have to be? Do they have to be in-house in Burley Heads, or are you happy to do remote? We want them there. We want them working with us in the office. Yeah, we well, just find that it's it's faster. You know, that's fine. You know what? Uh, we had a great conversation with uh, Patrick from Ninety Nine Designs, and you know he's got offices in uh, USA here, and also in, in in Europe. I'm pretty sure. And sorry, a lot of interviews. <laughs> And he was saying, you know, one of the things that he would actually love is to have his entire team together in the same room. Things just work smoother, faster, everybody's on the same page. The culture, you know, you don't have any cultural challenges. You don't have time difference challenges, which is a, is a big thing. So I'm with you on that, man. I, I prefer to have my team in-house as well. We just find it, you know, that like the moment people are outside the office say I don't know there's been a crash on the M1 and people who live in Brisbane and work in the Gold Coast can't get down for some reason or something like that straight away you see that there's just it's it's small but it's noticeable the difference in how connected they are and um, there's all this tech now like you got zoom which does and we use that we use that extensively then we use you know we have all of our daily stand-ups and everything like that where we're running it over zoom we've got you know one of those really nice Jabra microphones which sits on the desk it's like a conference call mic we have all that tech but it's not the same as people just being there I mean I just watched two presentations where the person was dialed in over zoom and it's not the same your engagement level goes from you know like 85% down to about 10% honestly I looked around and pretty much everybody was on their phones just like well what's the point I can watch this shit at home watching it on YouTube what's the difference and so I think having people together and that are in, in the place, working together as a team, I think as much as people say, oh, you should distribute everybody, they can work anywhere, I don't think it's quite the same. And I think if you need people to be working really, really fast on like actually really hard things and moving quickly between things and solving problems together, honestly, throwing them in a room together is the very best way to do that. I, I agree. And it's also the flip side. If you have actually remote workers, sometimes they're more product, sorry, um, the more project focused or production uh, focused, so they they actually produce you know specific results really really well in you know and sometimes that day out of the office, so those couple of days out of the office, go and solve this problem and come back, you know you can actually get some really great results doing that way. So you know it, I think it's just a balance, right? Yeah, you're right. I mean, of course, there's days where I say I've got to get some stuff done. I'm not going to go in the office today, which for me. You know, because a lot of my time is taken up with meetings and different people asking me questions about different things. Yeah, fire. You're a firefighter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it is, you know, at certain times, if you can actually get out and do that, it's, it's, it's great. However, I think if you're not there all the time, that actually makes it really hard. You know, for example, our product manager is actually based on the Sunshine Coast. He's one of our remote workers. But the thing is, he's down with us for about three or four days every second week. So that constant contact where... It's not sort of like over time he's just diverging. It's almost like you might get a little bit sort of disconnected, but then you're straight back on it again. Yeah. And provided you can do that, I think it's really important. But if you just say went and hired somebody who, I don't know, is in New Caledonia or whatever, and they're there the entire time and you see them twice a year, I actually think that that's, well, so far we've found it very difficult to keep those guys aligned with what else is happening in the office and keep them sort of working as effectively as the guys that are there. Sometimes it's down the individual too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, plenty of great, great insights. You know, we can debate on this all day. I, you know, I enjoy it. So, thanks very much, man. That was some really good info for building teams. Uh, if you want to just, you know, spread them out remotely or keep them in house. Thanks so much to our branded content partners, Everledger and Invest Sunshine Coast, for bringing us here to Myriad. I couldn't have done it without you guys, of course. And Trip Hotels for putting us up here in Fortitude Valley. Fantastic spot. And we've got uh, thanks to Road as well, Road Mics. Love you guys.